Welcome, I'm Katie and this is a Fountain Pen Awakening. I hope that wherever you are in the world you're doing super well and fantastic. Today is a beautiful sunny day here in Queensland and I'm out on my veranda as per usual enjoying this gorgeous balmy weather. I thought that today I could talk to you about my top five pens that are on my wish list. And now the reason I'm thought of doing this is because pen show is coming up in Melbourne on the 26th of November and I'm hoping 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 that I can get to it so I've kind of been thinking you know I have a lot of pens on my wish list guys I mean let's just be real here let's keep it a hundred you know what I'm saying but sort of I've narrowed it down to kind of these pens that I really really would like in my collection because I really like them so I thought I'd sort of talk to you about that and also I just wanted to show you how cool this looks and um, my ink swatching cards that I got the other day that I did a quick video on in the little swatch card holder now I used them all up because what I did is I just swatched all of the samples that I had in my collection at the moment and then all my bottles of ink and um, that I have and I ran out and I kind of missed doing my last Van Diemen's um, bottled inks but as you can see it just looks so super cool and um, you know all kind of very profesh <laughs> and as I kind of said in my other video I've I double them up so I put one in this side then I put the other one on the other side so as you can see how I'm missing yeah I ran out of cards so at the moment what I've done is I've just grouped them by ink makers or ink brands so at the moment I've just got my Colorverse here you know and um, my Lamy Crystal yeah, Kiono Oto, um, you know, some I just had a little bit of ink left, just enough to do the face, and then I had to write it in pen. <laughs> but yeah, I had super fun doing this, and so I've promptly gone out and bought myself some more ink swatching cards so I can sort of use them from now on to keep neatly. You know in this little i mean and these you can buy uh, separate or you can just buy one of them you know sheets that have got the little pouches in them you don't necessarily have to buy this little binder here but i think that kind of like keeps them nice neat and tidy and they're easy to look at so shout out to that just wanted to show you the end result but yeah so melbourne pen show coming up on the 26th of november hopefully i can get to it and what i really want to do is obviously go there have a look if they've got any interesting pens you know like really weird ass pens kind of thing that you you might not be able to find on the internet or you know in, in the main pen uh, retailers or you might not necessarily see them kind of um you know around and I also have a few nibs that I want to get looked at, um, especially my Pilot Cursive nibs, the Medium Cursive nibs, because some of them oh, I use some sandpaper to kind of like, you know, get a bit of the, the scratchiness out of them. And I think that I did more damage because I think what I've done is I've actually taken the actual grind out of them and they're not writing as crisp as I would like them to. So I've got three nibs that I want to get checked out. And then I was thinking that I want uh, this nib here, which is, I don't know if you, maybe let me just put it on here. It is the Iris um, from a Twisby Iris, the 580 diamond that I got. It's a stub nib and it kind of writes a little bit too watery for me. So I was hoping that I could get this ground down um, maybe to a cursive medium nib as well because at the moment I've got a fine nib on my Twisby and then as you can see in here I've got a variety of nibs that I 
I have and I've replaced. There's a lot of stub nibs in there at the moment that I'm not using because I've gone a full 360 and I'm using fine and medium nibs and I'm really enjoying them as opposed to all the big stub nibs that I bought some pens with. And the problem is that, you know, obviously I love the cursive medium from the Pilot stub nibs, but they're not kind of the same as other stub nibs. And um, I find that sometimes they just write too blobbly watery and I can't get like a fine writing in um, my journal and stuff with them. But so here I've got a list of what I would like to have. So it starts from the most possible to kind of the impossible <laughs> with the Visconti Homo sapiens Tuscan Hills, which is obviously a limited edition. It's around 1860 Australian dollars. So that's very kind of prohibitive for me. It is actually in the category of a grail pen, to be honest. I don't know if I'll ever be able to get that, but that's on my wish list. So what I will do while I'm talking to you, I will show you some images of these pens because obviously I don't have them. The first one is the Narvala Horizon fountain pen and I think this is a new edition. I think they've just come out and I saw them on Pulp Addiction. Yeah, they were having a sale a couple of weeks back. They were like having 10% off, I reckon. And I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, I wanted to get it, but I thought, no, I can't at the moment. But I fell in love with the Twilight one. Now, this this um, has a beautiful resin body and it's crafted from these awesome resins that have got the swirly, whirly patterns in them. Trim is really interesting. It's black PVD and also the nib. Um, which is a, a steel nib, is, is coated in this black PVD. And when we have a look at the cap band, it's sort of like uh, got this wave pattern on it. And that wants to represent sort of the separation between, you know, when you look at the horizon, so between the sea and the sky, obviously, and hence why horizon. So it's a piston filling mechanism and it has an ink window, and it is 153 millimeters long, and it weighs about 37 grams. So quite a heavy pen, and I guess that's because of the trimmings and the cap band on it. The next one that I have on my wish list that I've been wanting for the longest time is the Estabrook ST Tortoise with the gold trim. Now, I'd love, I'd love to have it with the custom grind, the Gina journaling nib. I read something that it's kind of like similar to a medium a stub nib and it's based on one of the vintage nibs that Essebrook used to do back in the day. It has an acrylic body, the, the nib is a steel nib and capped it is 149 millimeters long and the weight is 24 grams. I did manage to get myself an Estabrook Junior just to try it out because it was at a good price. This this pen here is, you know, over 350 Australian dollars uh, just because it's it's got the journaler nib on it. If you want to just get a normal, normal Esther book, Esther would be around 300 Australian dollars. So it is quite an expensive pen for me. Uh, if we stay under 300 Australian dollars, then I can kind of justify it. But once we start getting over 300, I just like, go, mm. and this is why I have to really, really, really love it. And I have to really, really want it in my collection because I can't justify that amount of money spent on a pen. You know, I, I am not only a fountain pen user or enthusiast, I'm also a collector. So I get also having interesting pieces in the collection. So my view on it now is that if I'm gonna spend and invest a lot of money in a pen, it has to be, you know, like an amazing pen that I really, it's gonna be a forever pen that I really want in my collection. And, um, and it has to have a point of difference too. I like pens that have a bit of a point of difference, uh, hence why I love Mahjong, former known as Moon Man pens, uh, just because they're fun and they're super cheap. You know, you can get these pens really cheaply and they write super well. And I mean, at least with this Moon Man here, I've had a great experience. Not so much with the other one that I got, the 600, but yeah, but that's okay. You know, $37. If you get a pen and it's, you know, less than 50, 60 or 100 Australian dollars, I don't mind if you get it and it's a bit of a dud, do you know what I mean? Or you don't write with it. It's once you start spending them dollars. Once you start getting over 250 Australian dollars to me, you know, it has to be a really love of your life pen. The next one is the Pilot Capless Vanishing Point. Now, the one that I really love is the Silver Stripes. Why? I just think it looks super, super classy. 
And if I'm going to get a vanishing point pen, I want to get one that I love. And, um, I do really want to try one, but I just don't want to buy whatever one just to try it out. I want to buy the one that I love, I like, I think looks classy. And this one here is a rhodium plated brass body with a stylish satin silver finish to it. So it feels really nice and pearly in the hand. Um, it's got a rhodium plated 18 karat gold nib and the retracted length is 141 millimeters and the weight is 30 grams. So quite a hefty pen. And if possible, I'd like to try that in the stub nib, but a medium, you know, is fine. If it's on sale, you can get it for around 360 Australian dollars, but I've seen the prices around 500, 550 Australian dollars, depending where you buy it. That's quite a pricey pen for me, at least. So the next one that I have fallen in love with is called Kilt Celestial. It's purple and cream. Now this one is made in Istanbul, Turkey. What I really love about it is that it's got these beautiful sterling silver hardware and the finial, it's got the image, uh, they call it a Achaki Felid, which is the Wheel of Fortune. And, um, and the barrel band was also a beautiful kind of simple geometric pattern, all handmade, obviously. And um, the clip as well is sterling silver. The barrel is made of resin. And I really love it because it's got this beautiful purple and cream. I just like the juxtaposition of those two colors together. It just looks really, I don't know, it looks beautiful. It's a little bit different. It feels more artisan. Yeah, so the price on this one, it's around 420 Australian dollars. I saw this pen on Cult Pens. I haven't seen it anywhere else. Capped, it's um, 139 millimeters long and the weight is 24 Graham. That's a gorgeous, gorgeous pen. Now, we get into the realms of impossibility, which is our Visconti Homo Sapiens Tuscan Hills, which is the limited edition. Why I'm attracted to it? I think it's because it's called Tuscan Hills, I'm not going to lie, <laughs> and it is a celebration of the majesty of Tuscany. And I guess that's kind of why I am attracted to this pen. Also because Visconti is a brand which is made in Florence. And Lau from Kenchan Craft, and I'll link the name below. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. He um, pointed out that the actual clip from the Visconti is the actual bridge, like the Ponte Vecchio. And I didn't realize that, so that's made it even more endearing to me. So anyway, long story short, just going to read you the blurb on this pen because they just oh, wrote it so nicely. So the limited edition Homo sapiens Tuscan Hills is a beautiful pen that celebrates the majesty of Tuscany. The barrel is made from very slightly translucent resin, hand polished to bring out the olive and cypress greens that represent this olive growing vineyard strewn area of Italy. The cap has a quick action bayonet fitting with a Visconti inscribed fully sprung pocket clip. A silver colored trim sets off the green pattern barrel nicely. So the filling system is Visconti's high vacuum power filler. It's got a palladium plated 18 karat gold nib and it's available obviously in a range of sizes and it doesn't give us here the length and the weight of the pen but it does say that you can customize the pen and you can add initials your zodiac um, sign or even natural stone so i'm guessing that would be on the finial i think yeah, that so there you have it i mean obviously there are other pens and um when i go to the pen shop hopefully i want to try out you know the homo sapiens i want to also try out leonardo's you know like i've never tried out Leonardo pens and also Pelican. I've wanted the Pelican Torti, you know, the white and green one because it's a beautiful pen. It's an absolute beautiful pen and that's kind of also on my radar. But again, super expensive pen. Again, so many people have it, but I want to try because everyone raves on about the nib, the writing experience with the Pelican. So yeah, want to try those and also I want to see if there's anything interesting out there to try. So that's me guys. If you like my content, if you like me, please give us a thumbs up, please subscribe, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Let's get these algorithms working. Also, let me know what your top five fountain pins are and what you have on your wish list. Thank you again everyone for watching and I will see you all in my next one. Ciao,